New documents out of the National Transportation Safety Board are giving us some new insight on that huge train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. It happened almost a year to the day from today. Transcripts from the train's cab detail the moment conductors realized something was wrong, saying that they didn't feel any air in the back. That means, quote, we've come apart. A few days after that, according to the report, folks from Norfolk Southern sent texts, including photos of the crash site. You can see another person responds, cool. Norfolk Southern telling us in a statement just in the last hour, we have no tolerance for anything that undermines the seriousness of the situation. We've taken steps to address this with our employees. You remember that derailment spilled hazardous materials everywhere, forced thousands of people to evacuate from their homes and opened up a whole bunch of accountability issues. Because even now, even a year later, some families say the impacts are certainly still being felt. Stephen Romo went back to East Palestine and has the story. I didn't realize you worked this close to the ground zero, as you called it. What was it like the day it happened? Well, I was there. It was a, a regular day. I work in the little convenience store. Christina Dilworth, born and raised in East Palestine, Ohio, worked just yards from the site of the train disaster, where federal investigators say a failed wheel bearing caused 38 cars to derail, some bursting into flames and leaking hazardous chemicals. Fortunately, there were no reported fatalities. The volatile and dangerous scene forcing first responders and investigators to stay back. Now, a year later, Dilworth hoped coming back to her house would feel more like coming home. But I have a feeling it's not going to be back to normal, ever. That's, I always feel like we're like the forgotten town. A lot of people just thought that they don't hear anything on the news, so they think it's all done and over and then cleaned up. And it's like, no, it's far from being over. The crash, a flashpoint for the Biden administration. In the days after, Republicans vocal in their criticism. The fact that these chemicals are still seeping in the ground is an insult to the people who live in East Palestine. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg called out for not going to the site for three weeks. Biden responding that investigators were there quickly. Within two hours of that derailment, the EPA was in there. And the administration pushing a door-to-door -door wellness check program. Now, coming back to this door, Dilworth has a heavy heart. It was where we had all our family gatherings, and of course, here's the family china. Health-wise, are you concerned just being here? Yes, I am concerned. Um, I've already been exposed. Because in the beginning, I was getting coughing, sore throat, rashes, nausea, sick. And it seems to have cleared up now since I've gone to the hotel. But since I've come back from the hotel, I've been sick the whole time. In October 2023, EPA report saying almost no contaminants related to the derailment have been found at concerning levels in the air since February 2023 and in surface streams since May 2023, adding that, quote, to date, residential groundwater wells have not been affected. Chris, how are you? Chris Hunsinger manages the Norfolk Southern remediation site near the derailment location. He says the cleanup portion largely wrapped up late last year, and much of the work now is restoration. A lot of people asking why it took so long. What was the biggest challenge at this site? It's a complex site, uh, but you know everything we do, we've got to work with the regulators to get done correctly. Hunsinger says the contaminated areas had to be divided into grids, tested, and given the all clear one segment at a time checking for the chemicals that spilled. Crews also dug culverts and installed pump systems, which are still removing contaminated stormwater, which is stored in massive blue containers nearby. Our goal here, certainly from the environmental standpoint, is to bring it back so you, you, know, you didn't even know where the event happened. How much of the focus of this has been about the water? I mean, a very large part of the focus has been the water. I mean, we knew you know, the water should no longer be affected. And now we're in the process of doing the testing and the analysis to confirm that water is not affected. Dilworth's mind has been on water, too. State environmental regulators say it's safe to drink from the tap, but she's still afraid. This is why I have all these bottles of water. I don't even know what it's like to drink out of the faucet anymore. And she wonders just how close to normal things will ever return. I'm hoping 10 years from now that, oh, yeah, OK, everything's fine, everybody's safe. But I, in the back of my mind, I think, are we going to start developing illnesses? Stephen Romo is joining us now, fresh off his trip there from East Palestine. And Stephen, in that piece, you talked about how this, in many ways, became a flashpoint for the Biden administration. We know President Biden is set to travel to East Palestine this month. That feels like a key moment for both him and for the community. 
Yeah, certainly. We don't have details on what exactly the president will be doing during his trip, but the White House hosted a call with reporters yesterday talking about it. And one point of criticism for the Biden administration has been the lack of an emergency declaration. Now, officials on that call saying it's still premature to judge whether or not those resources will be needed. Of course, we'll see what the president has to say, if anything, on that topic when he visits. We'll also see, frankly, what some of these very concerned residents have to say to the president once he's in East Palestine. Ali. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.